So uh, this is wholeness being this. This is no thing appearing as this. This is the absolute being relative. This is the formless in form. There isn't anything apart. There's nothing apart. There's just wholeness, oneness, energy. All there is is energy. This is energy. And it's energy taking this form. And energy takes every form. Energy is all there is. Energy can be anything. And nothing. At the moment, let's say energy is taking the form of bodies on seats in a room. That's what's happening. And it can be anything else. Energy is completely free. It is the everything that comes out of nothing. And because it's completely free and wild and crazy and apparently ordered as well, then it can also be constrained. Because it's unlimited and free, obviously it can be constrained and limited. And in the human physiology, that constraint, that limitation arises as a feeling of separation. It's not a thought, it's not a belief or an idea. It's an energetic sense of being separate. And what arises out of that is a sense of having an identity. I am a person. I am real. I exist as a person, an individual, a self. A me. And what arises with that sense of self and me is a very real feeling that this me lives in time, in a story. It exists in a story. I was born, I will live and I will die. I'm living in a journey, moving along. And I have free will and choice to make that journey better or worse. I can do that. And so uh, the whole energy that goes into the story of me, the story of the self, in that reality of being separate, is the whole energy is to make, the, make that story better. And a lot of the energy that's put into that as the child goes it goes to school, comes to university, maybe. The whole energy is to know more, is to understand about life more. But one of the other um, aspects of being living in that separate reality, in that, in that reality in which I am a person and everything else is something else out there, this feeling of being separate, that comes there also comes with that feeling of dissatisfaction. There's a, it's not necessarily recognised, unless there's a lot of sensitivity around, it's not recognised that you are separate from the tree or the wall or the sky or another person. But basically, because you live in that constrained sense of an identity here, of a, a reality in which me lives, then the me feels separate from everything. So I am something here, and everything out there that's happening is something else happening to me. But it's separate. And the dissatisfaction with that is the, is the sense that the sky, or, or another person, or a tree, or whatever arises, isn't seen as it really is. It's seen as a separate object. So me lives in a subject-object reality. It's artificial. It's actually a fantasy. But it feels very real to me. And that's the dilemma for me. Because me lives in a world that it thinks is real. It thinks I am real, and the tree is real, and the sky is real. It's only real. And it's out there. It's an object. So that dissatisfaction drives quite a lot of people to look for something deeper. Because 
because they feel there's something missing. There's something that isn't fulfilling about this separate existence. And so they look for the answer to that unfulfillment in religion or in therapy or in a search for enlightenment because people read about something called enlightenment and it feels like that could be the answer. So the me is looking for an answer and, to, and, and then, then searches for another object. The me feels dissatisfied and what it looks for is fulfillment for itself. So it's looking for something else other than money and wealth and, and all those other things. It looks for something called my fulfillment. Because it's been brought up to learn how to deal with the world, then it then thinks that in order to find fulfillment, I have to learn how to find it. So it goes to, it learns how to become a Christian, or it goes to the psychotherapist to learn how to become a more balanced human being, whatever that is. And then it goes to a, an enlightened master to find out how to become enlightened and fulfilled for itself. It goes to a master or a teacher who also lives in that fantasy world because the master or the teacher feels that they have found an answer, they found, found an answer, and they should help other people find that answer. There's nothing right or wrong about that. There's nothing right or wrong about anything. There's only what seems to happen. So what seems to happen to the seeker <coughs> is that he gets a list, or she gets a list of things to do. Christian, uh, a list of Christian ethics, a list from a therapist, and a list from an enlightened master. Meditation, fourth shark to be able, self-inquiry, find the answer, find out how to be aware, live in deep awareness, come and accept deep awareness. Even these days there are people out there communicating the idea that all you have to do is let go and accept that there's only oneness. <laughs> <coughs> so what we're, what we're talking about here is another possibility. What we're sharing together in words and beyond words is the possibility of the whole structure of me, of the individual in the dream of me, in the story of me, is actually illusory. It's an illusion that has come to feel very real for me, but in some way or other, um, it's, it has a structure to it and a set of ideas about who I am and what life is like. And what we're doing here is deconstructing. <coughs> We're deconstructing that idea, that possibility, that, that seeming reality that there really is a me and the me can, can make its life better. And we're also deconstructing together the idea that there is a path, that there is a journey, that there is something that the, that the me can do to move from A to B, for, to, that can move from the subject to find the object called self or So we can talk together, ask any question, just don't mind it, but just any question illuminates something. There's no answer to the question, by the way. <laughs> if, if, as far as the seeker or the individual is concerned, this meeting is completely and utterly futile and meaningless. <laughs> because there is no recognition here that there is such a thing as a seeker. Already what's happened here is the whole fallacy of, or the whole, yeah, the fallacy of there being a seeker has been exposed. So as far as this is concerned, there's no one here and there's no one out there. So there's no possibility that this would even attempt to help that because there isn't anybody out there to help. All, we're, all that's happening here is, that, is the exposure of a myth. That's what we're doing, we're exposing the myth. And that can be verbally quite powerful, but the most liberating thing that can happen here is be absolutely beyond words. It's about energy, as I said at the beginning, 
separation is an energy that's held in the body and it's a sort of constrained, afraid, tense, tense sort of energy. And what can happen is that that energy can melt back into the whole boundless, mad, free, unbridled business. Nothing can know what is. All there is is what is, but me 
rushes around looking for what mm -hmm. it is. It's energy. The, energy. the function or the apparent nature of me is to look for what's next, project itself in what it thinks is the future and what will happen to it. So, uh, let's be clear, the me, the me will never hear this message. The me can't hear it. It won't hear it. It'll hear something that it thinks it's hearing and turn it into something that it thinks is acceptable. Mm -hmm. But it it's isn't this message. To this is the worst message for me could ever hear it, but, and so it doesn't hear it. because of the things going on since then. I'm really sick of stories. And the me showed a really ugly face since then to show, hey, come on, I'm moving this game and so... <laughs> it was ballooning up like... Oh, involving me in bigger and bigger stories and, and stories weren't nice at all anymore. I would really love to end the story. I'm sick of you the story. You can't end it. Yeah, you are I the, know. Your ending is the ending of the story. <laughs> it is the story, and the story is me. We both coexist until we're done. And when there's an opening to this, which has nothing to do with me, there can be all sorts of... Me will try to fight back, so it wants to come and be more apparently powerful. Uh, definitely. <laughs> Is there something like grace? No. <laughs> no, there's nothing out there. There's no one out there. There's nothing out there. There isn't some um, more ethereal intention that anyone should become uh, uh, liberated because nobody does become liberated. Nobody does. So seeking and uh, you know, the whole effort to become free from seeking is, is actually wholeness pretending to be something that's separate, looking for itself. So there isn't a person, <laughs> so there isn't a person who becomes liberated, wholeness pretends to be uh, separate and rushes around everywhere looking for itself. I just don't get the point of why it is switching. There is no point. <laughs> There's no point to anything. Whole of this is, is beautifully meaningless. It's only me that wants the meaning and the purpose. Jane, um, I've heard a few times you like scoff at the uh, terms like true nature. And even the word truth. Um, Not stop, only expose. Yeah. Sorry, I meant mean, that's kind of being dramatic. Isn't it? There, um, there is, nobody has a true name, nobody has anything. There is no I to be am. There is no yeah. I to have a true name. Yeah, no, it makes sense now. Like, yeah. It's like becoming a true nature. Like. Um, the other thing is truth as well. Like. Um, you just don't like the word truth, I was just wondering. No, I didn't, you see, I, I, there's just the word truth. I just isn't that there's something here that doesn't like it. The word truth is the expression of something. So it's, it's like everything else, it's simply what's happening. But there is no truth. The idea of truth is somehow some inviolable, inviolable statement that can't be <coughs> doubted. Well, there is no such thing as something that can't be doubted. There's only what happens. All of this is what is. There's no truth. There isn't something that's immovable because what is is also what isn't. 
The idea that there's a certainty about this is ridiculous because there is, you, there's nothing that can be certain about what is and what isn't. So there's nothing to get hold of. If there was a truth, you could get hold of it. The seeker's looking for the truth and will never find it. It's like an object. They're true. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. This is what you're looking for. What you're looking for is right here. It's not now, it's not something like the down. It is what is. All there is in this room is what is. Whatever you do is what is. However much you resist this, resisting this message is also what is. So, that's the absolute truth. <laughs> Does the body and the breathing exist, or is it an illusion also? So it is the body. Does, does the body and the breathing exist, or is it no, nothing? Nothing. There is nothing that's actually real. Everything is real and unreal. Everything. All there is is no thing. Being. It's a power, it's a mystery. The mystics have tried to express, you could say, since the beginning of the apparent time. So this is no thing appearing to be something. So they're not the <coughs> part, it isn't no thing sort of hidden away somewhere and then leaping out and pretending to be something. It is that everything is also no thing. So there, so there isn't anything that's real uh, only. Everything is real and real. <coughs> Everything is, is and isn't. It's a mystery. It can't be known until there's nobody to know it. And there's nobody, then what's recognised is that everything is real and unreal. It's not recognised by anyone. It's a recognition. All that's left is what is and isn't. The whole difficulty with dualism is that it comes from the belief that the absolute lives in the church somewhere <coughs> in the sky and then it descends into the terrible, deep, dark relative, which is you, a human being. So immediately there's that sense that there's two things, the absolute and the relative. Of course there is the both. That's why there's no way to go. That's why there's no journey. How can there be if this is it? Every feeling you have, sitting in the feeling, sitting in the chair, the sounds, everything is the <coughs> beloved. Everything is already what is. And the thoughts? Thought. A thought is what is. A thought is, is a sort of record of what seems to be happening. Thought is a story. There's nothing, it's nothing other different to the wall or anything else. It's just what seems to be happening. And then there's no battle anymore for the idea I shouldn't think or I should uh, 
live in the gap between two thoughts. Have you ever met anybody that does that? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I, an idea that thought is wrong and the gap in between is right. <laughs> There's nothing wrong or right with anything. All there is is what seems to be happening. What's, but this is it. What seems to be happening here is the beloved, is what is wrong. But it's not an awareness of what's happening. If there was an awareness of what happened, that is what me does. Me keeps separate by being aware. Me, me is aware of sitting on the seat, and so it's separate sitting on the seat. It knows sitting on the seat is happening. Me knows sitting on the seat. All of us is sitting on the seat. Nobody's doing it. And it's not necessary to feel it. There isn't anything necessary at all. It's already complete. It's the me always think that there must be some way of sitting on the seat or breathing or, you know. We can go to lessons on it, but sit on a seat. <laughs> Job sleep. Seeker, but just amazing wholeness was there, and then 
me came back and wanted to have it. And then it thought that it had to be a certain way in order for that to happen. So by trying to be a certain way, it kept that away. That hides from the seeker. That which is longed for hides from the seeker by already being everything. Isn't that to complain a little. Complain? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, why to God? Well, last time I was here in November, suddenly there was no me anymore. And then it came back and hit me so hard that I'm really sick of it now. And I don't understand why it came back. Well, nobody well, does, it just comes back. <laughs> I don't need There's no answer to anything. There is no answer. There's no, you know, people come here for an answer about why does me come back? Well, the this answer is already the come back, that's what happens. But me coming back is also wholeness. It's not, oh, there, there aren't that. any enemies out there. Everything is the expression of wholeness. But the me is a lot of suffering and I'm really sick of it. I mean, so I will not talk in details. I already told you a little and I don't mm -hmm. want to freak anybody out here, but it's, it's, it's really not nice what can happen. Well, yeah, but you're only talking about that reality, you can't, I mean, I know uh, that it's, it seems to be that when there's an opening to this, often the me comes back and wants to fight this life, it knows it, you know, it's got to fight with life, so in some ways it me can come back more powerfully at a time. It but they can't, but the, but the reality there is the reality there, that's what's you can't say that what's happening there, what well, it can never be like any other reality.
there's no nothing out there directing energy. There's only energy. It has no direction. There's nothing driving it or organizing it or working out a master plan. It's awful, but there is no master plan. There never has been. There doesn't need to be a master plan because actually this is nothing happening. So there won't be any need to be a plan. <laughs> You said in uh, uh, deep sleep there is no meaning, it's absent deep sleep. And uh, when whatever this body returns to the waking state, the problem is that the life seems to continue as it was before I left into this uh, deep sleep. It seems to, because and the me lives in what it thinks is a known world, it thinks it knows the world. So when it wakes up in the morning, it thinks it knows the room it's waking up in. The reality is that the room is completely new. Everything is new. When there's no me, everything is new, so nothing is known. The action item list I had for my work is still there next when I come yeah. back. You think it is, because you think you know it. You <laughs> think you know it. By knowing it, you make it somehow seeming to be the same as the day before. <clears throat> but this seems to be different in the, what I call my, in my dream state, where I dream uh, um, where the me seems to be there as well. So every dream, every night is different. Mm -hmm. So I, I realize, okay, this is unreal. But in the waking state, everything seems to continue. Oh, right. yeah. Well, there are all sorts of things that happen to me, and sometimes me isn't there. But sometimes the, 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 the fantasy or the, the reality that arises seems real or unreal. It's, there's all sorts of energy, energies floating around and, and appearing in all sorts of forms. But there is no answer. No, there is no how long. <laughs> There's no how long. Did your did your me came back sometimes or? Yeah. So there was an awakening. What seems to happen to a lot of people is there's an awakening. There's no one there. It doesn't happen to anyone. It's there's so no relieving. And then the me comes back and it may stay there for five minutes, five months, or five years. Okay. And it's, it's exhausting. Yeah. Being me is very exhausting. People die of it. <laughs> Thank you. 
But, but if I understand it correctly, sorry? if I understand correctly, within that, still a me can um, manifest as energy again. Well, so maybe you're not hearing what's being said here. Um, when, when, when the when the illusion of me collapses, vanishes, is no more. There's nothing that can happen because there never was a me, and therefore there's not a me that could come back. It's an illusion that, that suddenly isn't there. So uh, you could say that liberation is the end of something that was never happening, and all that's left is what is. There isn't somebody living in what is. There's nobody left. There's no centre. There is only what is. <coughs> I think the difficulty with me is it always personalises everything. So it sees this standing here as being someone who is now free of me when we could come back together. When it happens, give me away. Um, don't give up. Um, are there people out there that would say you still have an ego, like your wife or co-worker? <laughs> <laughs> I can confirm very happily that my wife would definitely say I've got an ego. No. <laughs> no, the ego really is only an added colour to me. There's nothing left. So there wouldn't be anything that would need to have an ego in order to bolster the feeling of being a me that's more important than anyone else. So me, the whole fallacy of me uh, is no more, but never was. There's a character, there's a, a body monogram has a characteristic about it, a certain way the voice sounds and, and, and characteristics, but that that doesn't need a me for that to be there. The difficulty for the me is that it thinks everything that's around this body is to do with me. Me has the most amazing uh, arrogance. It believes that everything that happens is because of it. Actually, everything that happens is absolutely not because of it. Everything that happens doesn't need me at all. It's just an added fantasy. Which is completely useless and completely powerless. Is that right? I'm okay. still finding a bit with the idea that there is no me with the thing you described, and it's like if it would be impossible for me to conceive of there being no me. Possibly. <laughs> because the me feeds it by knowing that it exists. And the me can only exist in knowing that it does. So for that to suddenly collapse, everything is lost. This is about 